So talk just a bit about uh, some of the green building and sustainability systems that makes this house perform like it does. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the article that came out today in, in Architect um, speaks a little bit about this project in light of um, how it goes about those ideas relative to the, um, to the um, Ying Yang house. And I think what's interesting about our effort is that we've tried to use things that are relatively available um, and that how we bring them together in a way that's really holistic and in some cases not um, allowed and permissible. So it's not doing anything ex especially radical, but it's trying to do it extremely comprehensively and in a way that maybe the market doesn't currently allow. So whether it be about really pushing the envelope on some of the modularity, we worked with a local industry partner, Clayton Homes, on that. Um, some of the things that they do, but trying to push that a little further in both the um, design aspects and the structural aspects, um, but also the environmental issues. Um, the size of it certainly has a huge um, impact on um, how sustainability works, really thinking about the compact house and, and to do that using the historic Norris cottage as the, the type to kind of win people over who might otherwise be skeptical about that. We also worked really extensively in the landscape to deal with a lot of the on-site um, issues of, of site management, water management, water capture, et cetera. So it's um, really not about just the house, but about the home and landscape and how it fits within the town and the community. And you and your students uh, worked a lot with the local community to really get them invested in what kind of house and what kind of project this could be. Could you talk about that process for me? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I'll, I'll start a little bit and, and Matt can maybe add in since he spent um, so much time out on the site leading the construction process, process with the students and um, seeing the community on a daily basis. But um, to, to begin, we spoke to them early on just about the ideas and trying to understand what did they love about their community, what did they love about these really um, revolutionary homes that don't look that revolutionary from the 1930s and, and how did we... Um, speak to them about what a new Norris house might offer and what they loved about their cottages. And we did this sometimes by presenting their work um, in front of the post office. Um, this was a really important center of the community that um, the community actually, if they sort of followed post office rules today, they wouldn't have a post office. It's small, but they've elected to continue to have only um, delivery at the post office and not at their doors in order to keep the post office as well as the spirit of bumping into your neighbor while you're picking up your mail in that town center. So we've tried to present the work there as a way of evolving that conversation with them about the project and not imposing it upon them. And I don't know if you want to speak to how that translated to on-site work. Sure. I mean, there were, there were, you know, there were definitely a lot of uh, key community players that, that we, that we, uh, that were that played a lot of different roles with us uh, throughout the process that that sort of helped us to kind of get to know and get to love the town uh, through the kind of through their eyes in sort of the same way that they do um, and you know it kind of started uh, as you know people weren't really um, you know they'd sort of pass it by as we were working and then eventually over time we sort of had more and more community involvement and at one point, we even had to, uh, our next door neighbor was helping us put the siding up. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, so it, we sort of progressively over time kind of in, got embedded within the community. Everything from the, there's a little uh, lunch shop, little sandwich kind of deli up near the post office Trisha was talking about. And, you know, when we started, we were kind of brown bagging it. And then a couple of us went up there for milkshakes. Uh, I think that was Samuel Mortimer's idea. And then... Um, and then eventually we got to the point where we were eating lunch there every day as a way of um, as engaging the community. And people would come and sit down with us and, and talk with us extensively about the project. 